It was a painful night in Minneapolis and a day of difficult questions about the death of George Floyd, his treatment by the police, and the department's relationship with citizens of color. All of this captured tragically on video when Floyd told the police, I can't breathe. Amna Nawaz explores those questions. But first, Yamiche Alcindor has this report. In Minneapolis, outrage over the death of George Floyd. Yesterday, hundreds gathered to protest his death in police custody on Monday. By nighttime, police used tear gas on crowds as they were demanding justice in the case. Some of the unrest took place at this intersection, where only a day earlier, the struggle between Floyd and the officers unfolded. More than Today, else. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Over Fry said he would be requesting that the county attorney file charges against the officer who knelt on Floyd. Why is the man who killed George Floyd not in jail? If you had done it or I had done it, we would be behind bars right now. Level of humanity. Floyd's Where family has called for the four officers to be charged with murder. Essentially, they executed him in front of us, and we watched his life leave his body. Floyd's brother Rodney said the late 46-year-old, who was a bouncer at a local restaurant, was deeply loved. A great people person. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves him. If, if you got a chance to know him, he gives out plenty of good energy, good vibes. He's happy. He's smiling all the time. And Floyd's cousin, Sharita Tate, said the officers had failed to see the humanity in him. He held no value to them whatsoever. Um, they didn't care one way or another if he lived or died. And, and it was clear because as he was sitting there begging, begging repeatedly for somebody to hear him say, I cannot breathe, they just chose to turn look the other way. The family's lawyer, Benjamin Crump, said the video is damning. So I think any jury looking at this evidence, this overwhelming evidence, has to say at some point when they ignore his pleas, their intent informs. With echoes of the 2014 Eric Garner case in New York, Floyd's death has drawn condemnation across the country. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Yami Shalsendor. Let's get a view now from a leading voice in the community. City Councilwoman Andrea Jenkins is the vice president of the council. She represents the area that includes that corner where the encounter between Floyd and the police occurred. She joins us now. Councilwoman Jenkins, welcome to the news hour and thank you for being with us. I want to begin with what you just heard from Mayor Fry. He was unequivocal early today. He said that officer needs to be charged. Do you agree with him? Hello, uh, Amza. Yeah, I absolutely agree with um, Mayor Fry in his call for um, charges to be filed against um, the officer involved. And, and I am calling for all of the officers involved to be um, investigated. Um, you know, if, if, as the mayor said, if you or I had stood by in the commission of a crime, then we would be charged as accomplices. And so it was clear to me what we witnessed in that video was, was a crime. And it was not only a crime against um, George Floyd, uh, although he suffered the most deep injustice. But in, in my mind, it, it felt like um, it was a symbol for a knee on the neck of Black America. You know, the, the president has loosened the restrictions on the EPA, which we know is creating a, um, uh, a issue in black and brown communities all around this country, inhibiting our ability to breathe. Um, the pandemic is impacting black and brown communities disproportionately in, in in regards to access to health care and testing, in regards to employment, in regards to um, who is dying from this pandemic. 60% of all the deaths have been black and brown people. And so it seems like that was a symbol for um, uh, having America having its knee on the necks of black and brown people in this country. 